Okay, so um, Mr. Marshall, can you um, tell us how this Thai story came about? How sure. Um, I, I used to work for Reuters. I was quite senior correspondent for Southeast Asia, based here in Singapore. And in March, um, I gained access to WikiLeaks cables. This was before they were out in the public domain, where they all are now. Reuters had received them through Wiki or, or from another source outside WikiLeaks. And none of the media was doing anything with them. The, the cables were still being held by the big news agencies, by WikiLeaks. No one was reporting on them. You know, when I when I'd heard initially that the WikiLeaks cables would be coming out, these US diplomatic communications, I immediately thought Thailand was the key country that these cables could have an impact on, of every country in the world, really. Because Thailand's very unusual in the sense that the, the actual reality and the official story are so different. And in general, when diplomats are in talking to reporters, they have to go along with the official myths of each country. But in these communications, they're talking privately. So they can tell that they can be more honest. And one thing Thailand really needs right now is honesty. So I started work on the cables as soon as I knew Reuters had them. I knew it was a great opportunity to, to, for journalists to finally be able to tell the truth about Thailand because we've all had to self-censor ourselves for too long. I thought, no, we didn't have to because the material was in the cables. So the cables gave us cover as journalists to report this. Reuters wasn't happy. Uh, they became very alarmed at what I was doing because they have a lot of business in Thailand. They have a lot of stuff in Thailand. They felt it was very risky, and I can see their point. We, we all know the risks that people face because of 112, and I can understand why they thought it was risky. They're a large company, they're very risk averse. They told me not to write it, and they threatened me with all kinds of sanctions if I, if I wrote it. Um, but to me, I felt it was very important that, that it had to be written. Uh, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time in Thailand, I care about Thailand. And once I knew there was a way that we could get past all these restrictions on reporting and just restrictions on truth that we're seeing in Thailand, which I think are very damaging, I just felt I had to do it. And even if I had to leave my job and not go back to Thailand, I had to do it. Because I think we all know the one thing Thailand needs right now above everything else is an honest debate about the future. And I think these cables give an opportunity for that and my story gave an opportunity. And that's why I decided to do it. So this story, if the readers are to read your story, mm. which is um, now partially released, yep. what can they expect from reading your story? Well, the core material, as I say, is the cables on Thailand, the US Embassy cables. There's more than 3,000 of them. And they give, they're crucial for two reasons. They give an independent view of what's happening in Thailand. That's not always correct, but it's not made by politicians who are just trying to support themselves or for any other, you know, other reasons. It's frank communications between US diplomats and that makes it very important. It's an independent, frank source that's not self-censoring. So you'll learn what the US State Department and the US diplomats really think about Thailand. I think that's a fascinating insight in itself, learning what an external source sees is going on in Thailand. I've tried to turn the cables into a narrative to really reveal some of the issues that are crucial in Thailand. So the succession crisis, the political crisis, what's coming next. I go into a lot of detail about all of this and I've added a lot of academic literature and also links to video, to pictures. I want to make this a documentary, a piece of documentary evidence that can, you know, really prove what it says through a variety of sources. Lastly, I hope it's entertaining. Uh, it's very long, um, but I've tried to write it in a way that makes it interesting. And my only real hope is that once people have read it, and especially Thais have read it, they'll have a better understanding of some of the issues facing their country, and that will enable them to, to enter an informed debate more easily. In your opinion, what would your story um, be important in terms of Thai political development or like uh, democratization of Thailand? Okay. Um, I think the key thing for Thailand right now is that, as I said, Thailand needs an open, honest, wide-ranging debate about the appropriate role of the monarchy, about the political system, 
about the succession and other factors. And everybody believes that somehow they don't have the right to have that debate or it's banned. And that's ridiculous. You know, the Les Majesté law bans insults against the king and the queen and, and the, the prince. And I'm not suggesting we should all go around insulting the royal family. Clearly no human being deserves to be gratuitously insulted. But I think Thai people need to learn and have the confidence they can have this debate. It's their right. It's not Les Majesté to discuss how the monarchy should work in the 21st century. And they also have to have this debate with full knowledge of the facts. You know, at the moment, the, the role of the monarchy in Thailand in particular is circulated by through rumour and innuendo and coded messages, and nobody quite knows what's, what's true and what's false. And the cables give a stronger sense of that. It helps us really identify what's been happening within the monarchy and how it might affect Thailand. So I hope it really has two effects. Firstly, once I've put this out there in the public domain, there's no reason why other people can't talk about it now. I've broken the law. I chose to do it to try and open the debate and I hope others will follow. Secondly, they can have this debate in an informed way. And that's really the point. It's, it's not my job to tell Thais what to do or tell Thais what to think, because that's up to, up to the Thai people. But if I can help people have this debate openly and honestly and with full information, then really that, I'd be delighted that I'd achieved that with Thai story.